Bismillah. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana. So the chapter heading today that the author, Al-Hajjawi, may Allah have mercy upon him, he gives us is Bab Salat al-Tatawwa. The chapter pertaining to supererogatory prayers. Tatawwa in the Lugha, Tatawwa linguistically is fi'l al-ta'a, is that you do an act of worship. As Allah Zajal says in the Quran, وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ اصطلاحاً, uh, technically, تَطَوَّعَ means فِعْلِ الْطَاعَةَ غَيْرُ وَاجِبًا is to do an act of worship which is not obligatory. To do an act of worship which is not obligatory. What are some of the important benefits of doing these extra optional prayers? There's a huge amount of benefits. But please mention to me one of the important benefits of doing extra tatawa salah. Question to yourselves. What is the benefit of doing extra optional prayers? Assalamu um, alaikum. And uh, it makes up for mistakes in the first salah. Excellent. Well done. Very good. Jazakallah khair. In the hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Inna awwala ma yuhasibu bihi al-abd yawm al-qiyamah min amalihi salatuhu." That the first thing that the person will be taken to account for on the day of judgment from his actions is the salah. For in salahat, فقد أفلح وأنجح. And if his prayer is well and good, all in order, then he has become successful. Wa in fasadat, فقد خاب وخسر. And if his prayers are not correct, they have mistakes. He's missing out on some of the prayers, etc. In a state of thought. And if there is something missing from his obligatory prayers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the angels, Look to the scroll of my slave. Does he have any extra optional prayers? And then use those optional prayers to make up for the mistakes and the missing parts which were found uh, regarding the obligatory prayers. So here we find in this hadith in Tirmidhi that to do the optional prayers is something so important because it fixes for us the mistake in our obligatory salawat. And many of us have, we have mistakes in the obligatory salawat. And also from doing these optional deeds, a great benefit is that when shaitan he comes to attack us, he's going to have less chance in getting us to leave off the salawat. Why? Because these optional prayers, they're like an outer barrier, an outer uh, wall of protection, protecting our obligatory prayers. And if we didn't have those, then the attack of shaitan will be directly to our obligatory prayers. But because we have that outer barrier of protection of the optional prayers, shaitan first has to get through those before he can get to us being lazy about our obligatory salawat. So these are some of the benefits and there's many more. So to do the optional prayers is something which is extremely important and recommended. The author, he says, uh, kusuf. So the author now is going to list, in his opinion, uh, in terms of order of importance or superiority, what, which salah comes first and second and third and fourth. So he says that the first salah is the salat al-kusuf. Why is this the first? It's because the Prophet wasallam commanded it and he never left it off when the need was there to pray. So the Kusuf Salah is the solar eclipse Salah, either due to the sun or the moon. Uh, it's the eclipse Salah. And we'll speak about this later on in the chapters uh, when the author, he dedicates a chapter to this. So it was never left off by the Prophet Sallallahu unlike the one that comes after it, Salatul Istisqa, the rain Salah, the Prophet Sallallahu from time to time would leave it if he wouldn't pray it. And also Salat al Kusuf is solely for Allah Azza wa Jal, in the sense that it's not like Salat al-Istisqa, which is seeking a benefit for the creation. So Salat al-Kusuf is solely for Allah Azza wa Jal, in terms of uh, turning to him out of fear and hope uh, to remove the Kusuf and to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. So secondly, the author, he says, he categorizes, thumma istisqa'un. Then after the Salat al-Kusuf is the Salat al-Istisqa. And this is because um, there's a gathering of people. And what you'll notice is that the author, whenever there's a salah where it's legislated to have jama'ah, the, the author is going to put 
these salah before the other types of salawat. So any salah which is legislated to have jama'ah, like the kusuf that we just mentioned, and also this one that is tisqa, then it's going to be uh, put in higher rank than the ones before it. So this comes after kusuf because after kusuf, the Prophet Sallallahu never left it off, but it's tisqa. From time to time, the Prophet Sallallahu would leave it off. And it's because also that this is uh, for the needs of the people and it's not solely for Allah Azza wa in the sense that this is due to the need of the people requiring rain, etc. The author says, thirdly, التراويح, meaning that the night prayer that we pray in Ramadan. So this is stressed in the third category because also it's legislated to have jama'ah and thus it resembles a fard. But why did the author put this as a third category and not the second category? Why does the author put this here as the third category and not the second category? A question to yourselves. I kind of mentioned the answer in passing. Uh, I think that because the first two categories are directly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is put after Salat al-Istisqa at tarawi because Istisqa is for the fulfillment of the needs of the creation and the needs of the creation is something which is very important so that's why a tarawi which is solely for allah azawajal, and there's no fulfillment of the needs of the creation comes after al istisqa which is very important for the people in the sense that they need, they need their needs fulfilled this is why it comes after um al istisqa and also the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we know that after a few nights of praying with the people the Prophet ﷺ left out Salat al-Taraweeh because he didn't want it to become obligatory. The fourth category of Salawat that the author mentions, optional prayers, he says, Thumma Witr, and then the Witr, right? This is ranked as fourth because there's no congregation, there's no jama' for this Salah unless it's uh, connected to the Taraweeh prayer, unless it's connected to the Taraweeh prayer. However, Witr is something which is extremely important. As many of the Imams, they said, like Imam Ahmed, Imam Shafi'i, and others, they said, uh, That whoever leaves out the Witr prayer, which is basically just one rakah uh, in its uh, minimum form, then this person is an evil person. And it's not appropriate that his witness, his testimony be taken. So this is kind of a warning to people that they shouldn't leave out the witr on purpose. The author, he says now, pertaining to the witr, speaking about the witr, he says, that the witr is prayed between the isha and the fajr. And this is even in the case if uh, isha is prayed in the time of maghrib, jama taqdeem. Okay, because once isha is prayed in the time of maghrib, the point is that once isha is prayed, then you can go ahead and you can pray with her. In the hadith in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah amaddakum bi salatin hiya khayrun lakum min hum rinna'am al-witr. That Allah Azawajal has given you a prayer which is better for you than the red camels. And as we know, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, red camels, they were like the Rolls Royces of the time, something very valuable. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ja'alahu Allahu fima bayna al-isha that the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah has made it from the time of Isha until the morning prayer comes in, until the Fajr prayer starts, okay, the time of the Fajr prayer. So the time for Isha is between, uh, the time for uh, Witr is between Isha and Fajr. And also the end time with regards to uh, the prayer mentioned in the hadith just now, but another narration the ulama use is the one in Bukhari where the Prophet ﷺ said, Salatul Layl Mathna Mathna, that the night prayer is to be done in pairs, in pairs of, uh, in two, two. فَإِذَا خَشْيَ أَحَدُكُمُ الصُّبْحِ And then if one of you is fearful that the dawn is about to come upon him, Fajr time is about to come upon him, صَلَّى رَقْعَةً وَاحِدًا Then he prays one raka'ah, تُوْتِرُوا لَقَدْ صَلَّى Then he goes ahead and prays one raka'ah and that will make a witr out of what he has prayed before. So put the point in the hadith is that it mentioned that if you are fearful that the dawn is about to come upon you, the time of Fajr is about to come upon you. So that is the end time of the Fajr Salah. Question to yourselves, 
what is the best time to pray Fajr? Uh, to pray Witr. What is the best time to pray the Witr Salah? In uh, the last third of the night? Exactly. The last third of the night is the best time to pray the Witr due to the many narrations regarding Allah as well descending at that time of night in a manner which befits His Majesty and calling out to the creation to answer their prayers. So the last third of the night is the best. The author, he says, may Allah mercy upon him, that the least amount of witr is a raka, meaning that if you pray a witr just one raka, this is mujze, this is sufficient, it suffices you, and it's legislated for you to do that. In the hadith in Sahih Muslim, Ibn Umar, he said that the Prophet ﷺ said, al witr raka'atun min akhri layl, that witr is one raka from the end part of the night, from the later part of the night. So the hadith proves to us that if a person prays just one rakah, then that would suffice him as having prayed with her. And this was also the opinion of some of the companions, like Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, as well as Uthman radiallahu anhu, and Aisha radiallahu anha, as mentioned by Imam al-Baghawi in Sharh al-Sunnah. So to pray one rakah is okay, it's allowed to do so. The author, he then says, وَأَكْثَرُهُ إِحْدَ عَشْرَ and the most amount of the witr that should be prayed is 13 raka'at. In the hadith in Bukhari Muslim, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, she narrates, she says, مَا كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَزِيدُ فِي رَمَضَانِ وَلَا فِي غَيْهِ أَلَا إِحْدَ عَشَرَ رَكَعَ That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would never increase in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan going above 11 raka'at. So this is what is the most and... Um, in uh, Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, Imam Ibn Abdul Bar in his book at Tamheed, he mentioned that this is that which is narrated the most from the Athar pertaining to this issue. That the most of the narrations pertaining to the issue of Witr, they mentioned that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would pray eleven rakaat. Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, he mentioned in at Tamheed. The author, he says, مَثْنَ مَثْنَ وَيُوتِرُوا بِوَاحِدًا That, as we mentioned in the previous hadith, that the night prayer is to be done two by two, and then you add one uh, rak'ah to make everything a wit- to make everything before it a witr. Okay? So this is the preferable way to pray the witr, that you do all of the units of prayer in twos, and then you add one uh, to finish the witr. The author he says, وَإِنْ أَوْتَرَ بِخَمْسٍ أَوْ سَبْعٍ لَمْ يَجْلِسْ إِلَّا فِي أَخِرِهَا That if the person prays with her five, okay, or seven, then this is to be done continually. Meaning to say that you pray all of the raka'at together as one unit, you pray one raka'at, then after the sas does, you go to the next raka'at till the end and you make only one tashahud and then you make the sleep. So if, it's, if you're praying five or seven, then you pray all of them together with one sitting at the end, and then you make the taslim. And this was mentioned in the hadith in Sahih Muslim by Aisha radiallahu anha, where she said, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي من الليل ثلاثة عشرة ركع That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would pray at times, would pray in the night 13 raka'at. And he would yutiru min dhalika bi khams, and he would make witr with five from that. La yajlisu fi shayin illa fi akhiriha. And he wouldn't sit as a tashahud except in the last of that raka'at. In the last of the raka'at. Um, the author he says, wa bi tihsin yajlisu aqib al thamina wa yatashahadu wa la yusallim, thumma yusallia tasi'a wa yatashahadu wa yusallim. If you are praying nine, so we told you how to pray five and we told you how to pray um, the seven, with regards to praying nine, the author, he's saying, what you do here, after having prayed from one to eight all together in one go, you make one tashahud, okay? And then you get up and you pray one more rakah and then you make the taslim. Okay, so with regards to praying nine, you pray all of the eight together, then you make a tashahud, and then you get up, pray another rakah to make it nine, and then you make the taslim. 
طيب the author he says وأدنى الكمال ثلاث ركعات بسلامين أدنى الكمال the least of completion is to pray three ركعات with making two تسليمات what he means here is that you pray two ركعات a pair of ركعات you make the tashahud and you make the taslim, you finish those two, then you get up and you pray the third rakah, okay, by itself, and then you make the taslim. So if you want to pray three, you do two, you make the taslim, you get up, you do the third one by itself, you make the tashahud and you make the taslim. This is the way to do it, and this is what has been mentioned uh, from the madhab by Al-Mirdawi Al-Insaf, in his book Al-Insaf, as being the... Uh, the uh, popular opinion in the Madhab, and this is what also Sheikh Ibn Baz said is the best way to do so. Question to yourselves, and some of you are asking questions, inshallah I'll come back to the questions because we've moved on uh, from uh, the part where your question is related to. Uh, a question to yourself, when praying three raka'at, what sifa, what uh, way of praying it do we have to avoid? When praying three raka'at in Witr, what way of praying do we have to avoid? It's resembling uh, Maghrib, Salat al-Maghrib. Exactly, we have to avoid uh, resembling Salat al-Maghrib because the Prophet said لا تُوتِرُوا بِثَلَاتِ تُشْبِحُ الْمَغْرِبِ Don't pray with three resembling Maghrib. And Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani, uh, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said that this is authentic according to the criteria of uh, Bukhari and Muslim, though they didn't narrate it. Imam Hakim and others narrated it, but they said, he said the hadith is authentic based upon their criteria. The author says, يَقْرَأُوا فِي الْأُولَى بِسَبِّحْ وَفِي الثَّالِثَةَ وَفِي الثَّانِيَ بِالْكَافِرُونَ وَفِي الثَّالِثَةَ بِالْإِخْلَاسِ That in the first uh, raka'ah, you pray سَبِّحْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْعَالَى As mentioned in the hadith of Ahmad and Abi Dawood, that the Prophet ﷺ كان يُتِرْ بِالثَّلَاثِ وَكَانَ يَقْرَأْ فِي الْأُولَى بِسَبِّحْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْعَالَى والثانية وفي الثانية بيقول يا أيها الكافرون وبالثالثة بيقول هو الله هو أحد in the hadith narrated by Ubay ibn Kaab as collected by Ahmed and Abi Dawood and others the Prophet sallallahu used to pray three witr and in the first he would recite سبح اسم ربك الأعلى in the second raka he would recite قل يا أيها الكافرون and in the third raka he would recite قل هو الله أحد the author he says ويقنطوا فيها بعد الركوع and in the witr salah, you make the dua al-qunut in the last raka'ah after getting up from the ruku. So qunut, lughatan, in the lugha, it has many meanings and from its meaning is dua. And that is what is intended in this part of the chapter. That qunut, it means to make dua. Okay, as mentioned by uh, Imam Al-Nawi in his Al-Majmu'ah, in his book Al-Majmu'ah. Uh, so dua is made to either protect yourself from harm or to ask for good. That is the meaning of qunut. Tayyib. And the mashhur in the madhab, the famous opinion in the madhab, that is the qunut is made with witr all year round. The qunut is made with witr all year round, not just in Ramadan. So when you're making the qunut, the author he tells us what to say. He says, يقول, Allah mahdina fi man hadayt. Allah mahdini fi man hadayt. Allah guide me amongst those that you have guided. وَعَافِنِي fi man afayt. And give me a state of well-being in terms of my deen, in terms of my worldly affairs, in terms of my health. Give me a state of well-being amongst those that you have blessed with well-being. And take me under your wing of protection with those that you have taken under your wing of protection. And bless me, give me barakah in that which you have given me. And save me from the evil that you have decreed. You are the one that passes judgment and decree, and no judgment or decree is given in regards to you. The one that you bring close to you in terms of protection will never, will never be humiliated. And the one that you have taken to have as an enemy, that person will never have honor and never be raised in rank. Tabarakta Rabbana wa ta'alayt. Raised are you, Allah Azawajal, high and mighty and blessed. Tayyib ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his Majmul Fatawa that this dua that you're making, Allah mahdini fi man hadayt wa afini 
So you can see that the dhamir here is uh, mufrad, that you are making it for one person, which is yourself. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, regardless of whether you are praying by yourself or you're praying in a congregation, then you should make uh, this plural. Why? He said, because uh, even if you are praying by yourself and not in a congregation, you are including the ummah in this dua and Allah subhanahu wa So according to his opinion, you would say, Allah mahdina fi man haddayt. So you put the dhameer of the moon, which is the plural, uh, prop- the plural um, pronoun. Okay, you would do it in plural, according to what Ibn Taymiyyah said. The author says, then after that, you add on the dua, which is mentioned in uh, Ahmed and Abi Dawood, where the Prophet Sallallahu would say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bi radhaqa min sakhatika. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in your pleasure from your anger طيب. and i seek refuge in you giving uh, a state of well-being uh, and a state of overlooking and pardoning from your anger okay from your punishment sorry from your punishment and i seek refuge in you from you I cannot, I'm unable to praise you and to extol your virtues and they should be extolled. You alone are able to extol your virtues in a true way. So this should also be said. And then the author, he says to us that we should make salah upon the Prophet ﷺ. And this is understood because his dua at the end of every dua should be salah upon the Prophet ﷺ. And in mention in Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ was teaching one of the companions how to make dua and he said, uh, that verily dua when you make it it's between the heavens and the earth nothing from the dua is raised up to the heavens until you pray uh, upon Muhammad until you pray upon your prophet so praying upon the prophet Muhammad after the dua is one of the ways to ensure that it's raised up to Allah Azza wa Jal and that hadith was authenticated by Sheikh Al Albani. The author he says, And then the person, after making the dua, he wipes his face. Now, this is based upon some narrations that, for example, Imam al Bukhari brought in his Adab al Mufrad. But just because you hear the name Imam al Bukhari doesn't mean it's authentic. Because Imam al Bukhari, though he was the Imam of Muhaddithin, in this book, Al Adab al Mufrad, he didn't make it a stipulation that all of the hadith would be authentic, unlike his other Jamil Khabir, unlike his other collection, which is known as Sahih al Bukhari. There it was stipulated that all of the hadith had to be authentic. But in this collection, Adab al Mufrad, that stipulation wasn't there. And some of the scholars, quite a few of them, like Ibn Taymiyyah uh, and Shaykh al Albani and others, they said that the hadith pertaining to the wiping of the uh, face after the du'a are weak, they're not authentic. And Allah knows best. The author he says, And it's disliked for the person to make qunut in other than witr, meaning that the person he shouldn't do this in his fard salawat. If he's not, if he's praying the fard prayers, he shouldn't do the witr. This is something which is disliked because it's not reported from the Prophet وسلم, that he ever did so. Illa except. And illa and tanzila bil muslimin nazila, except or unless there is a nazila uh, um, upon the Muslims. Nazila means that it's a very difficult uh, tribulation, it's a time of difficulty, extreme worry, and something of that nature. Something very difficult is happening to the Muslims, like it's happening in many cases uh, to Muslim communities and Muslim uh, population around the world today. So a nazila is something which is a difficult tribulation. And the ulama, they say that this exception that the author is giving, that you can do the dua uh, al in the fard salah as an exception, is when there is a nazila. So the nazila is of two types. One is which is from Allah Azza wa Jal, in the sense that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends something uh, through nature, like an earthquake, or he sends uh, you know, stormy winds, uh, hurricanes etc something of that nature which causes a tribulation for the people 
in this situation, because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the, then the dual qanut is not legislated, okay, according to the method. However, if the nazila, if the tribulation is from the creation in the sense that you have enemy attacking the Muslim lands or, um, you know, doing things like uh, establishing an, an embargo, which is making life very difficult, then in this type of situation, then the uh, qanut is legislated in the fad salah. Because the Prophet ﷺ made qunut against the 70, against the people that killed the 70 reciters uh, when they killed them, right? So in any nazila which is from the creation, it's allowed, but in a nazila which is from Allah Azawajal, it's not allowed. Then the author, he makes an exception to the exception he just made. He said, غير ta'un, except for the ta'un. Ta'un is um, a plague, but it's a very specific type of plague. It's not just any epidemic. It's a plague which is very specific and the ulama have discussed what it is. It's the type of plague that befalls the body and the insides of the body become, um, you know, become um, corrupt. It's not the word I'm looking for, but the inside of the body becomes uh, decayed and uh, the blood and pus starts to come out from the skin. This is what ta'un uh, is. So uh, the companions of the Allah, when they had ta'un, it's never been reported that they made dual qunut, okay? And also because they understood that the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned in many narrations that this is a shahada for the one that dies from this. That's a gift that the one who dies from this, he gets to be raised the rank of the martyr. But the COVID-19 that we are suffering today, we ask Allah to protect all of the Muslims and to raise it from all of creation, I mean, is not according to the majority of the ulama in this category. Because as I said, the ta'un, is a specific wabah, it's a specific plague, and COVID-19 is not uh, considered as being part of this. So again, the author, he said to us that the uh, qunut is in the last raka'ah of the witr, and it shouldn't be done in the far salah, unless it's a nazila. And we said that the nazila is of two types. If it's from Allah, so it's the creator, then it's not to be done. But if it's from the creation, in terms of war, etc., then it's allowed to be done. And also the author just gave another exception now, he said, unless it's a ta'un, if it's a ta'un, if it's a plague of some sort, then this is not allowed to be done. Uh, not if it's a plague of some sort, if it's the specific plague, which is the ta'un, then it's not allowed to be done dual uh, qunut for this. The author, he says, In the situation where there's a nazila and there's a tribulation and the people are going to make dual qunut, then what is legislated is that is for the Imam al azam that is for the Amir of the Muslims, is the leader of the Muslim, the Khalifa, that he is the one that should be making this dua al-Qunut. He's the one that should be leading the people in this dua. And if he doesn't, then the one that he appoints or whoever the ministry on behalf of the, uh, the leader of the Muslim appoints, these are the ones that should be doing it. Why? They say because in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, him ﷺ being the leader, nobody else was ever reported to have made dua al-Qunut other than the Prophet ﷺ when he was alive. And the mashur in the madhab, the mashur, the famous opinion in the madhab is that it's uh, it's recommended that this person who's making the dua al uh, in this situation, the situation of the nazila and having been appointed by the authority, that they make it in every salah. Why? Because it's narrated in Ahmed and Abi Dawood from Ibn Abbas that the Prophet Sallallahu shahran mutatabi'an that the Prophet ﷺ, he made dua al-qunut for a month continually and he did it in every single one of the prayers in Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha and in Fajr Salah. However, they say that in Maghrib and in Fajr, it's highly stressed to do so. But if you don't do it in the other Salawat, then the one that is more highly stressed to do so is in the Maghrib and the Salat al-Fajr in the situation of being of having a nazila. So the author said that it's allowed to do it in the fard, in the obligatory prayers when there is a nazila and when the imam of the Muslims or the authority of the Muslims has commanded this. Now my question to you or a question to you, what obligatory prayer would be an exception from that? What obligatory prayer would be an exception from that? Jumu'ah prayer. It's Salat al-Jumu'ah. Because Salat al Jum'ah, you already have a dua in the member, and the people are congregated for that already. So that is the one that is exempt, Barakallahu Feek, as mentioned by Sheikh Hamad al Hamad, 
in his explanation of Zad and stuff like that. The author he goes on to mention now, وَتَرَاوِيحُ إِشْرُونَ رَكَعَةً Praying Salat al-Tarawih is 20 raka'ah, 20 raka'ah. Excuse me. Tarawih is Qiyam Ramadan, is to pray the night prayer in Ramadan. Or another way of saying it as the ulama, they say here Salat al-Muslimin jama'atan fi Ramadan ba'd al-Isha. It is to pray together after Isha in Ramadan, when the Muslims congregate to play, to pray in Ramadan. وَسُمِّيَتْ بِذَلِكْ And it's given the name of Tarawih. Why? لِأَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يَتَرَوَّحُونَ Because they would take rest. Tarawih from يَتَرَوَّحُونَ Tarawah. Okay, that to take a rest. That they would sit between every four uh, units of prayer. They would sit and take a rest. يَجْلِسُونَ وَيَسْتَرِيحُونَ بَيْنَ كُلِّ أَرْبَعَ رَكَعَاتِ They would take a rest between every four rakahat. So Tarawih has comes from the word where you take a rest. And Tarawih in Ramadan is 23 rakat. Is 20 rakat, adding the three for the witr. And this is narrated by Imam Malik and Imam Bayhaqi and Al-Kubra. That the Prophet that uh, it says, Kana nasu kana fi zamani ibn ibn uh, كان الناس يقومون في زمان عمر ابن الخطاب uh, ب 23 ركعة في رمضان that the people they used to stand in the time of Umar رضي الله عنه ب 23 ركعات okay in Ramadan so this is generally the accepted opinion amongst the majority of the ulama some of the ulama they say you pray less you pray 11 some they say like the Malikis you pray more you pray 36 and Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned that in reality, there's no specification of how much is legislated to pray in Ramadan, except that uh, this is the more popular opinion of praying 20 within the three, 23 rakat. So if somebody was to pray less than that or more than that, then it's nothing that the Muslims should argue over. And Ibn Taymiyyah, he said that the Muslims, they should look and uh, if they are going to pray longer, then they shorten the rakat. If they're going to pray shorter a time period, then they increase the number of rakaat, and Allah knows best. Uh, he said, the author, Tuf'alu fi jama'atin, that the taraweeh is done in congregation. And this is how it's always been done, that the uh, Salat al-Taraweeh has been prayed in congregation. However, if you were to pray it not in congregation, then it would still be valid and legislated. And this brings us to a uh, point uh, that many are talking about today, which is whether you can you can pray tarawih behind the TV or the radio or something of that nature because people can't get to the masajid due to the COVID-19. The overwhelming uh, fatawa from the uh, overwhelming amount of scholars is that it's not allowed to be prayed behind the TV uh, or even behind the radio, even if you can see the imam, because the rows are not connected, okay? The rows have to be connected from the Imam and to those who are praying behind him. And for many other reasons that they mentioned, but this is one of the key reasons. So he said it should be done in Jama'ah, and if it's not done in Jama'ah, as we said, then it's not problematic. Ma'al uh, Witr. And also Witr is to be prayed uh, with the Taraweeh in congregation. If you are praying the Taraweeh in congregation. If you leave the Witr, uh, and don't pray with the Imam, then that is well and good as we'll come to discuss. But if you're praying Tarawih uh, with an Imam, then it's better to finish it and pray the Witr also because the Prophet ﷺ said, as collected by Imam Abi Dawood, uh, Whoever prays with the Imam until the Imam leaves, then he gets the reward as having prayed the whole night. So it's a mistake that people do, they end up leaving in between the uh, Salah and they don't finish with the Imam because they miss out on this huge reward which is that you get the reward of praying the whole night with the in congregation. So he says it's prayed with Witr after Isha, Ba'd al-Isha fi Ramadan, in Ramadan. وَيُوتِرُوا الْمُتَحَجِّدُوا بَعْدَهُ And the one who is making Tahajjud will make his Witr after the Tahajjud. What this means here is that if somebody is praying with the Imam, right, but he wants to, or he knows, he intends later on that he's going to get up and pray more rak'at in the night after the taraweeh, then this person 
he doesn't pray, uh, he shouldn't pray the witr with the imam, but rather he should pray later, okay? So this is one of the explanations of this point, as mentioned by Sheikh Mansur Saqib. That he shouldn't pray, that he doesn't pray with the Imam because he's going to get up again in the night. Uh, so he prays his witr alone in the night later on. And because in the hadith in Bukhari, Muslim Ibn Umar said that the Prophet said, uh, Make the last of your prayers in the night, witr. Okay? The author, he says, If the person does decide to pray with his imam, okay, because he wants to get the whole reward of praying with the imam, then what he has to do, he has to make the witr shafa. So he prays the 23 raka'at with the imam. And when the imam makes the taslim after the 23rd raka'at, after the witr, then the person gets up and adds another raka'at. He doesn't make taslim with the imam on that witr. And this will make it shafa. This will make it four instead of praying three, right? So this enables the person and then that later on when he prays in the night, he can still pray his witr because you know the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said uh, that there cannot be two witr in one night. So you can't repeat the witr twice. So the author is saying that if you pray the witr with your imam in taraweeh, then after the imam makes the slim of the witr, then you get up and make one more raka'ah and then you make the taslim, okay? This will uh, enable you to then pray your witr later on in the night whenever you want to do so, according to this opinion. The author says, And it's disliked to make any nafa between the units of the taraweeh. So when the imam has finished praying too, and if he rests for like a few minutes, then it's disliked for the person to get up and to pray any nafa at that time when the imam is resting uh, why is this the case question to yourselves why is this the case why is it disliked to pray when the imam is resting between the pairs between the units of uh, taraweeh is it because the, uh, it's linked to the reward of praying with the imam it's to do with that in the sense that it's it's mufariq al jamaa you are breaking away from what the jamaa is doing the jama'ah are praying behind their imam and they're waiting for him, waiting for the rest. And then they get up and they continue. So it's uh, it's dislike to do that. However, there is an exception that some of the ulama, they allow that you can do it. When do you think you may be allowed to do it? That you may be allowed to pray between the units of taraweeh? What do you think they might be? Uh, where, where, might be where may there be an exception? Where may there be an exception? to the dislike is uh, the maybe the uh, obligatory pray if you are, if you want to pray so we're talking specifically about the tarawih the author is saying that if you when the imam is resting then in that time period you shouldn't do any nothing okay and i said that there's an exception the exception is uh, when in some places where the rest is very long for example the rest is like 15 minutes or more and in some places, they break the taraweeh up into two sections. They do eight or they do four uh, in the early part of the night. And then they complete the taraweeh in the latter part of the night. So in that situation, you have a long period of time. And within those periods, you can do extra nafil if you wish to do so. The author, he continues, may Allah have mercy upon him. And he says, la ta'aqib fi jama'atin. It's not disliked to make ta'aqib in jama'at. Ta'aqib in jama'at is that after taraweeh has been prayed with the imam, Okay, then the people they come back later on in groups and they pray again in Jama'at, extra nafil in Jama'at. Uh, Ibn Abi Shayba, Imam Ibn Abi Shayba in his Musannaf, he collects from Anas uh, radiallahu anhu, who said that there's no harm in doing it. La ba'as bihi. Innama yarji'una ila khayrin yarjunahu. They're returning to a good that they hope goodness from, meaning that they're returning to a good act of worship which that they hope will give them lots of reward. And they are returning to seek refuge in uh, evil that they are fearful from, meaning they are uh, seeking refuge in the punishment of Allah by doing this extra act of worship. So Anas radiallahu anhu and some other companions, as mentioned by Imam Ibn Abi Shayba, 
they said that it's not a problem if the people they come back and they do this ta'qib yani they come back after the tarawih is finished and they pray again in jama'ah however to add uh, to mention that the previous hadith that we mentioned where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said um man salla ma'a al-imam hatta yansarif kutiba lahu qiyam al-layl that whoever prays with the imam until he leaves then qiyam al-layl is written for him meaning he prayed the whole night this hadith has context to it. The companions that came to the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Ya Rasulullah, please extend for us the taraweeh. And they were so eager, they wanted to pray even more than the three to five hours or even more that they were already praying with the Prophet ﷺ. So they asked the Prophet ﷺ to make it even longer. So then the Prophet ﷺ quoted them these words that whoever prays with the Imam, then it's as though he has prayed the whole night. Whoever finishes with the Imam from start to end, it's as though he has prayed the whole night. So it's as though the Prophet ﷺ is saying to them, you can't do better than this. The fact that you prayed with the Imam from beginning to end, you get the reward of the whole night. So it kind of puts what the author is saying in a bit of a um, suspect light, but Allah knows best. Of course, he has his evidence for it. And he knows way more than I know and much better than I know. Uh, but I just thought I'd add that there to give you some context with regards to those who disagree with it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best we'll stop here inshallah and not move on to any other sections and uh, I ask Allah to make everything I said correct and to forgive me for my shortcomings and mistakes and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this effort that you are making heavy in your scale of good deeds and to make you from those who understand, learn, memorize and then teach to your loved ones and to your communities to get even more reward and to spread the knowledge I mean and to protect us all from COVID-19 and any other type of harm there may be there. If you have any questions, then feel free.